Now, you may not have the freedom to take off and have a bunch of new experiences, you know, working construction for six months or backpacking through Nepal or becoming an expert glass blower or whatever. But reading widely gives you a way of broadening our experience vicariously from your armchair. It may not be as effective as going out and doing it yourself, but it's a whole lot better than nothing. Here's a personal example. As Neil mentioned, four years ago, when I had a different job and a little less gray hair, I spoke at the first O'Reilly Software Architecture Conference. Then I gave a talk explaining where software development fits on the spectrum of engineering disciplines, and how even though it doesn't look much like things like civil engineering, there are strong similarities with other fields like aerospace, chemical, and industrial engineering. That talk was actually 15 years in the making. I had spent the first part of the 90s learning what you might call classical software engineering, structured and object-oriented analysis and design, modeling, UML, etc., and being frustrated by it. And then I spent the latter part of that decade learning about the then new ideas of agile software development. And one of the themes of agile at that time was, well, we tried building software the way engineers would, and it didn't work. So let's try something else. And in the middle of that, in July 2000, I stumbled upon a wonderful article by David Billington in Scientific American, The Revolutionary Bridges of Robert Maillart. There, I learned that, at least in some cases, designing and building bridges doesn't look much like stereotypical ideas of what engineering is like. It's full of iteration and experiment and trial and error, and it's kind of test-driven. It sounded a lot like software development. That led me to two related books by Henry Petrosky, Engineers of Dreams, Great Bridge Builders, and the Spanning of America, which features several of the beautiful bridges around Manhattan, and To Engineer is Human, The Role of Failure in Successful Design. Those books confirmed to me that real engineering is rarely as straightforward and predictable as what we've all been led to believe. And from there, I went on to aerospace engineering and mechanical engineering and read some of those things. And the process completely changed my view on how we should strive to develop software systems. <laughs>